So have you ever found yourself in a high stakes meeting? Tensions are pretty high. People have their opinions and your heart starts to pound quite a bit. You, you feel yourself kind of winding up. What's happening in those moments is your emotions. And the question is, do your emotions take control and run you or do you have control over your emotions? That's what we really want to get into talking about today is how to better regulate, manage and control your emotions. Got a great team with me this morning. We're going to dive into this, share some of our personal stories and experiences about emotional control and why having a high EQ is an important thing. Gentlemen, how are we doing this morning? Fantastic. Fantastic. Doing amazing. So let's get into this. Um, I wanted to talk about this subject, especially for men. I think one of the things that, you know, we get put into this mix of not being emotional. We shouldn't be emotional, but obviously we are human. We do have emotions, but what we I think sometimes need to figure out is what are some of the better ways to be able to manage our tempers, our emotions, but I think even more importantly, expressing those emotions and those feelings because that's what we bottle up inside. And I think those are the things that lead to heart attack and stress and, and, and ulcers and, and many, many other things that can impact your health. So uh, Jerry, I'll come to you first because you mentioned that you recently did a, a presentation talking about emotions and- Yeah, um, yeah. The, the presentation, I actually titled it Triggers um, as opposed to, but the whole conversation was about emotions itself, um, but why I named it triggers was because it's usually some sort of trigger. Sorry if my kids are screaming, um, but speaking of triggers, uh, that the triggers usually um, bring up some emotion. So it, it's some sort of sadness, anger, um, uh, which are the typically, you know, the typical two emotions, right? But there could be annoyance, um, there could be, um, um, but it, it essentially they all boil down to fear. It's a uh, fear of something. Um, and if we can actually get to the place of actually capturing what triggers us into emotions, then we can get out ahead of the emotions that we usually suppress. Um, and what we talked about in the presentation yesterday was realizing that your emotions are kind of like uh, storms in the sky. Uh, or you know uh, storm clouds in the sky that uh, that they arise out of you know um, some sort of pressure causes those clouds to to willow up and billow up and all this stuff and then it becomes a storm and also talk we also talked about the idea of being able to recognize that you aren't the clouds you are the sky so you aren't the you aren't the um, you aren't those emotions. You're the one who's aware of the emotions. And so if you can learn to do that, then you're less likely to suppress those emotions. And by suppressing emotions, all we're doing is perpetuating <laughs> those same emotions. We, we stuff it down. We like, I'll come back to it later. And we never come back to it. And then it, it ha because of all that pressure, it has to come to the surface at some point. And so that, that, that's a lot of what we talked about. And the reason why it came about was actually um, one of my clients, as y'all know, I'm a manifestation coach. So I, I teach people how to you know, create their realities and stuff. And one of my clients was having a lot of trouble. Um, he, was, he kept running into the same patterns over and over again, like, uh, uh, you know, constantly getting tickets. He's a truck driver, by the way. He was constantly getting tickets. He was going from one one company to another company and um, so on and so forth, other issues. And I, I had him spend a week understanding what triggers him good for good, for bad, for indifference. No, no matter what it is, I wanted him to start noticing that he 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 these emotions that keep coming up for him are just habits like you're just habitually reacting to the circumstances of your life. And if you can get out ahead of it, you can then let those emotions come up and let them pass like clouds in the sky. Excellent. Yeah, no, and that's very true. And that's really what we want to talk about quite a bit today is the, the management of the emotions. Because a lot of the times it's because it's not about not having emotions. You're going to have them. 
the question is, how do you manage those emotions when they do come up and, and, and work your way through it, and hopefully as constructively as you possibly can? Chris, I know you. we talked about this a little bit prior to, and I know uh, the last couple of years have been uh, some tumultuous times for you, some challenging times in different ways. So I know there's been kind of this emotional roller coaster that you've been on. Uh, what would you like to kind of open up with our audience and share maybe a little bit about what your journey has been like recently and, and the challenge you've had with kind of keeping those emotions wrangled in to a point where it wasn't really impacting you uh, day to day? I was thinking about this last night because I go through my standard pod prep. You know, I read over this, read over this synopsis and then I start to put together some data. Um, obviously, in this particular instance, a lot of this is. Um, from a personal perspective. So we're talking, you know, and you see, you have a story. I mean, God knows I got a story for everything. Um, but I think the thing that I, when, when I saw the subject matter come up, I immediately thought, this is, this is one for me. But then as I kind of started to get into it a little, I was like, how am I going to literally share some of the experiences and what, what my mind sees and feels, um, at the end of the day and segue in through to how do I process? Um, Cause that's really what the, so one of the things I thought of us like, you know, as men, and I know this, we're not a, just necessarily a men's channel here. So we're, 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 we're for everybody. So let me say that before we get going. So somebody's like, well, you're not, you know, you're not addressing my needs um, at the, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, um, this is really um, how you deal with the, <clears throat> the challenges of your the day-to-day challenges of your life. Um, how does that hit you? Um, you? You know, obviously, we're I'm sitting in company where Brian, you've known me for thirty years. Um, I think the difference today is the challenges are still the challenges; they're not going away, regardless. Now, the difference is is I've got new tools in my toolbox to deal with the challenges. And I think that's part of it. I think that that's part of it later on, but to begin with, it's recognizing that you have these challenges, recognizing that um, in today's society, um, men are a little more ready to admit that we have, we have emotions and they sometimes trip us up. I think I went through a lot of, I think I went through many, many years where I was, I don't think I was consciously in denial, but I was in denial. And what, and and what that did was it set me up for these really hard times where something would creep up on me and not, not taking the time to get to know who I am and what I'm about. And some of the childhood, the things I've gone through in my childhood and my upbringing, how that affects how you respond to the, the the challenges that come you know we that come that come to us uh, on a day to day basis, um, and are you have you you know and and oh how what you've seen as your models to respond to that has a big part to play in that. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. This is a little bit off the the the, the path a little bit. Um, I have a stepson and, um, uh, he, when I first got together with his mother, uh, he was, I don't know, eight or nine, something like that. And how he would handle, um, the challenges with his sisters, if they upset him was he would start smacking on them. And I didn't, that just blew my mind. I didn't understand. I'm like, how are you, how are we, you know, we don't do that. And then I realized his role model was his, his biological father. And he was known to be uh, an abusive person. So he, he was, you know, when things didn't go his way, he struck, you know what I mean? Immediately he went into strike mode and it took me a, took me about a year to, to, to break that habit. Cause I had, you know, and it wasn't one of those, you know, you fight fire with fire, but it was like, we got to sit down and talk about this. And basically, yes, um, people in, you know, and I'm not going to say women, but people in general will challenge you and will upset you. And, but if, if, if that's all you've seen, that's how you're going to, that's how you're going to be, your Brian's going to get conditioned to react. Um, 
some people when challenged, um, we get, you know, we immediately get loud. Uh, we get a little, we get a little crazy. Um, and, but what ends up happening is you have to understand that, especially from a male perspective is your ego gets into play. Your ego comes right to the forefront. I mean, it's like, how dare you challenge me? I'm so-and-so I'm this, I'm that. And that's the lead in as opposed to, uh, today with the tools I got, you step back for a second, you, you process, you know, as best you can. And you come up with the, the pool of potential responses and how you're going to handle and comport yourself. And that's how you, and that's how you proceed from there. So, but I think a lot of times because we are, there's so many, uh, socio and economic situations that we deal with and just so much that society is pro, you know, has, has put into our heads and our minds that we don't, we don't take the time unless you have developed your, developed it and understand it. You're going to react in an e- more of an egotistical type of a manner, which is, you know, we're ga- hunter gatherers, we're leaders. And how dare you challenge me on this point? And I have a, I have a story later on in this because I just had a situation pop up uh, in my professional universe that quite frankly is, uh, um, uh, Jerry was talking about, I got triggered quick and I had to really, it was, I was, I was on, it was on the razor's edge and I had to really tap into the tools and the things that I've learned over this last year and change on how to handle that situation and really make, had to make a a split second decision on how I was going to proceed. And it was, believe me, it had my heart racing for, you know, probably about 30 seconds to a, to, to a minute or so where I, I was like, I had to make, it was a decision. Do you go back or do you go forward? It was hard. Yeah. It was really, really hard, but I did the right thing. Yeah, so. I totally get that. So a couple of things came out of what both of you gentlemen just shared and that I want to kind of tap into. One is talking about our feelings and, and how, you know, th- those can obviously be triggers for us. And uh, a lot of the times we react from a defensive posture. We all we feel like we have to defend ourselves or defend our position, or, or you know, so we dig our heels in. Uh, and that's where some of the, the tools that Chris talks about. You know, we, this is an old thing we all heard. You know, before you respond, you know, count to ten. And you, you don't have to count out loud, but you know, take a breath, right, and to, to get to let it settle, and before you come right back with that retort, because a lot of the times what you may say is not really what you truly mean or feel you just haven't given yourself a, enough time to let what has been heard or done uh process through so that you can intelligently re- respond to it so that's the emotional intelligence piece of it uh the other piece i want to say is it's okay to feel your feelings but so for whatever reason a lot of the times that's what happens too is we feel like we need to numb ourselves to a degree or build this wall around our feelings right and that also causes more problems because that that's that's again putting these things whether you're stacking up a mountain or uh, like shaking up the coke bottle and all of a sudden the, the top goes flying off and you spew all over everything in in all kinds of different ways but I, for me that's one of my personal challenges is to just accept feeling the feeling good bad up down left right whatever the feeling is that you're feeling it's it's you it's who you are it's part of you know what makes you the unique individual that you are is those feelings and emotions and your perceptions on different things. And it's okay to feel those different things. The question is, how do you then respond to it? What do you put back out? And as Chris, like you said, with your stepson, his model for that was to be physical and to be violent, right? And that's what you have to identify for yourself is when you do have those triggers and you are responding, what are you trying to accomplish? In that response and that's probably the biggest piece of it that you that we want to talk about is is it to just defend yourself and and say my way is the right way and your way is wrong and etc cetera, etc cetera. or are you actually seeking to get to a point of resolution to a point of understanding etc knowing that sometimes resolution or understanding means you agree to disagree because that's going to happen also and be okay with that from uh, an emotional standpoint and be able to move on I want to share a story I just talked about uh, with one of my friends and female friend. We're having this conversation and we're talking about 
uh, regulating emotions and, you know, how sometimes things get out of hand. So she's talking about her observation of it for women versus men. And she says, you know, it fascinates me sometimes to see how women will get into these little cat fights with each other. And they're literally about to gouge each other's eyeball, all, all about, can't talk today, eyeballs out, you know, because they're, they're, they're so, their emotions are just, you know, through the roof, right? And then she, and she says, but then I'll see some of my male friends and they'll literally get into a fist fight, you know, over whatever it is. But then two hours later at the bar drinking. So somehow there is this way to recover from where we are where she says with the women, they will have these daggers and talk about each other for decades and never, you know, kind of build that bridge back. What are your thoughts about how we do that? How do we manage to pull ourselves back so that we can mend the relationships and be able to push forward productively? If I haven't posed this question to you guys before, I'm sorry, but uh, I always go to, what do you want? What is it that you actually want? And someone might say, I want to pull their head off of their head. That's the, <laughs> it's like, great. Okay. And then once you've done that, what do you want? <laughs> right? So typically a person wants peace or um, resolve, right? And when they get triggered, it's because they're not experiencing their peace or resolve, and most people are unaware that they are creating their lack of peace and resolve. Most people are completely unaware that that's actually what they're happening and that, that's happening. And then they blame the outside world, whether it's their friends their family or their bosses for why they are feeling how they're feeling. And so, like I said before, emotions are like passing clouds. You know, so we and because we're mostly unaware, we don't recognize that they're passing clouds. We think that we are those clouds. And so what I would say, the reason why men have an easier time getting through it is one, because men have been taught, maybe it's biological, I'm not sure, but I, I, I know we've definitely be, been taught that no one's coming to save us. So we kind of inherently know that there's no reason to stick with whatever story we, we happen to have been telling ourselves, you know, two hours ago, we got stuff to take care of. We got to get, it's not to say that they took care of the emotion that they were feeling. They might've suppressed it, but we move forward. We like, okay, short term, not going as well as I want, but the long term says this. So, you know what, it's probably best that I stay friends with this guy, you know, so on and so forth. Whereas with women, no offense, ladies who might be listening, um, have more of a short term type of thinking about their emotions and what's going on in their life. And we'll hold on to those short term thinkings for the long term. And, um, and so, but the rules are the same as far as emotions are concerned. Again, it's like you said earlier, um, um, Brian, it's like what you do with those emotions. Um, so um, one of my mentors kind of instilled it in my head. He said, all anxiety is separation anxiety. All anxiety is separation anxiety. Separation from what? Source. It's separation from God. Separation from your true being and essence. And so if you're feeling some emotion that says that I'm less than, you know, this divine being, you're going to keep wrapping yourself and finding more proof that you aren't this divine being. So if you want, if you can learn to separate yourself from that emotion and realize, Hey, I'm free right now. I'm peaceful right now. I'm resolved right now. I don't need anything out there. You allow what's going on in, in the external world to do as it does, because in the grand scheme of things, you don't know why whatever is unfolding is unfolding other than your habitual thinking about whatever is unfolding. So if a person can actually learn to recognize that their emotions and their triggers are habitual, for the most part, they'll see that, oh, wait, anytime these type of people do this type of thing, I, I get into this thing, I get into the state of consciousness, you start to learn and was like, okay, well, then how do I want to respond the next time? How do, how do I want to respond? Why? Because your reactions 
are based on your state of consciousness. If you were a different person, you wouldn't react the same way that you did, you know, that last time. It's like, if I said to Brian, Hey, Brian, your, uh, your blonde hair is nappy. You'd be like, what are you talking about? But if I said, dude, your hair is nappy, you might react being like, yo, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm on camp. You would have a emotional react. You, uh, you would have an emotional reaction to it based on your, how you view yourself. So if you can learn to say, I'm not this emotion and I'm not the state of consciousness that I I've been thinking of myself at, you can then have a more, um, I guess a more elevated point of view about whatever it is that's going on at the time. You're not separated from the source of your own being. And again, fear, anger, sadness, all that stuff is only because we're believing we're separate from that, which would give us the things that we're looking for anyways. I agree with you right there. And that, that elevated position is really what we want to try to or aspire to be because it allows you to have more perspective, um, to be able to see more of, as, as we talk about triggers uh, and where that's coming from, what emotional responses you're having to the triggers what that might be rooted in. So you, you know, you're digging down and you're digging down, right? And, but that's the key point about the awareness and intelligence is, is where those things are coming from. And Chris, I'll come to you. You, you, know, you alluded to that, uh, talking about the situation with your stepson and you know his examples of certain things. And then even for you, and, and I'll let you share your story because I think it's really relevant to what we're talking about right now um, about this uh, kind of conflict that came up in, in your business space here recently because I think that's very relevant to our audience to hear them, to hear your story and how you actually process your way through that trigger, those immediate emotions, and then how you thought about, wait a minute, you know, as, as Jerry just said, what do I want? What do I, how do I want to resolve this? And they resolve it in a way that's going to still honor me because that's part of it, right? You, you want to honor yourself and, and, and have your, you know, be heard and be seen and be respected in, in whatever ways that that, that that is, but also keep the relationship in a place where you can move forward with it. So Chris, you can tell us that story because I think it's very relevant. Okay. So, you know, in the, the business that we're in, because we're pretty much in the same same business, more or less, we're in the same um, industry. Um, so I do a lot of Zoom Zoom calls, a lot of Teams meetings, stuff like that. So one of, one of the people that I, I work with in my in my professional universe, uh, called me and we were and it start it started out as kind of a they were, I guess you could say, uh, complaining about some things that are going on. That I, I I'm guessing the point was they didn't feel like they were getting supported, and of course I'm listening to it and I'm trying to take it in. I'm, I'm you know I'm doing the two ears one mouth thing, and I immediately came to. And this is me trying to be helpful in the beginning. I was like, well, hey, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're complaining about this person. Another person, you feel it doesn't, you're feeling like you're not getting supported organizationally. And my question was, are you, the people that you're asking to, to support you, are you holding them accountable? So in other words, if you come to me and ask me for something, don't just ask me for something tell me that there's a, you know, is there a timeline attached to it? You know, is it, it how do you want to be supported? And all I got was, I'm, I'm, I don't even know if he, if he's, if the person was verbally communicating what he wanted, or if he was just thinking it, I don't know. I didn't get into that point, but I basically challenged him on um, for the, about the accountability piece, because I felt that that wasn't part of the, the steps that he was using as a professional to work with other people because the reality, and as I told him, I was like, I told this person, we all have things that we have to, to do. And I'm super busy. You're super busy. And if you want something or you want some other person to give it to you, you have to qualify the need. If you don't do and that, 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 that goes for your personal life too. It doesn't just go into your business life. If you can't qualify what your need is. How am I supposed to support it? So really long story short, and I could tell he was, the person was just, he was just struggling with it because it immediately translated to uh, an attack on me. 
And I didn't know where that came from. I'm like, I'm sitting there like, because I've been nothing but, um, I, I believe I've been nothing but a, gr- a, a good supportive team member, you know, with the best of intentions, just tell me what you need. And it went into this attack and then it just, it really kind of sla- it just went downhill quick. And the, you know, the verbiage and, and just the aggression. And I found, I, I don't use this. I don't use these words or I don't use trigger very often. I, I'll just be honest. I don't use that. That's not something I say very often, even though that may be happening. I, I don't know how I choose to, um, to share that. I, I found myself, I found my blood just coursing through my, my, my veins. And I said, Hey, you're not going to talk to me like that. And I won't get into the specifics of what was said, but I got to the point where I, where my blood and you know, you, Brian, you know, me, I had to shut my camera off. I literally shut my camera off because I felt myself about to go over the line. Right. And in all that was all the processing and all that I'm working on today, I, I went back to my workshop and what I'm working on. And I'm like, I'm a leader. This is a situation where I have to lead. I have to figure out how to lead this. I have to get around my emotions because right now I want to come out firing. I mean, I literally want to pull out all my, my weaponry and just start going for it and just really seeing if I can bring, you know, your first thought is, I'm going to bring you to your knees because I know how to do it. I'm, I'm capable of it. But then I thought, but that's not, that's not my objective. You know what I mean? This is not about me. So I had to like literally 180 and pull my ego out of it. And that's when I cut, that's why I turned the camera off because it would, the, the idea of seeing this person on camera would have just heightened it because he was like a run. This person was like a runaway freight train. Right. And I literally, I, I unfortunately had to defend my position, even though it wasn't about me. I still had to defend my position, which is, I don't know what's going on. I don't know, you know, I don't know what, what I've given you or shown you. I said, but I can assure you that it's not what you're, what you're seeing or thinking. And more importantly, we need to fix this. And uh, so I got a, so I, I, I got a reluctant apology and we kind of, and I, so the crazy part was out of the conversation. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm wired the way I'm, my, my wiring is working today. It's when I see something um, I'm in, used to be, you went completely negative. So the old that's, and that's, that represents the part of me that's like, Oh, you're going to attack me. Well, I'm going to attack you back. The new me says, I have to be a better example. I don't know how I'm, how I'm, you know, I guess this is just growth on my part, but all of a sudden that literally sprouted up. I have to be a better example. I'm a leader. All my leadership just literally rose to the surface and my ego just kind of got squashed. And, uh, so we ended up, we kind of, we talked it out. Uh, I, and the funny part was what, what, one of the things that came out of it was some stuff that I wasn't doing in support, you know, and it wasn't that that was what the conversation came into, but that's where I went in my mind. I was like, there's something I'm not doing. There's something I can do better. And I immediately started to challenge myself. How can you affect change? How can you, from a leadership perspective, really show this person? Because in my mind, they were whatever was going on on their end, they were projecting on me. You know, I do. Th- 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 I mean, this is all we're only talking about um, up to two minutes worth of. Pro- I'm processing this all in real time. You know, and it's just the, everything's firing right. And I immediately came to the conclusion that this person is projecting. This is not about me. It's got nothing to do with me. I just happen to be a, I'm a friendly face and I'm getting hit with friendly fire, you know? And uh, so we, we talked through it. Um, I ended up, I ended up getting better for it. You know what I mean? Because there were some things that were on the table. I was like, you know what? I can get better with that. I, I, I gotta do better. 
And all he was asking, truthfully, the person was asking, he was, that person was asking for support. But it didn't come off like that to begin with. It really, it came off very childish and very me, 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 me. And like, I'm doing everything and nobody's doing anything. And I pretty much kind of backed my way out of that. And, and we ended up agreeing um, that we were going to do a couple of things together and try to move forward. And I, I was still talking off camera because I was still kind of, I was still having some trouble with it. But I thought, and I thought the best way to do this was, was to take that spotlight off of me. Uh, Cause there's something about being on camera that really heightens it a little bit, and especially when you're in discourse, you know, we're in full blown discourse, you know? Uh, and I had to t- pat myself on the back for holding it together. And so the funny part, we go, you fast forward a day and I, I, I was, it, I managed to get out of the call in one piece. I managed to get out of the call without using any choice words, you know, or, or you know, or, or, or attacking this person. But it bothered me the whole day. I mean, it literally bothered me the whole day. And, you know, I had to think about, do I want to talk to my boss about this? Do I want to, do I want to have this conversation? And my first thought was, no, I want to work this out on my end. I really want to, I want to figure this out because we're all adults here. I know it. I honestly know what to do. I know a course of action that I believe will be conducive to positive outcomes. So I put it in that position, but I went through the whole day. Ultimately I ended up somehow or another, it ended up my boss and I were having a conversation in person and it kind of ended up coming out and we ended up discussing it. And I still, and I, and I still ended up reassuring him. I'm like, I don't want you involved. I said, I'm just sharing this with you because I, I believe you need to know, you know, as I, as I processed, I was like, I can't keep this a secret because I honestly believe that you know about some of this stuff from what you deal with. Uh, so ultimately, like I said, I went the whole rest of the day. I was just really kind of, I was just thinking about it. And so we had actually scheduled a meeting for the following morning and I knew that it needed to be addressed. You know, the old way is like, we'll just leave it alone and hope that it'll be okay. And we'll, and, and history will never repeat itself. And I'm like, bro, don't get delusional now. <laughs> now you're tripping. So the first thing out of the gates, we said, you know, it was a pleasant good morning. Good morning. How you doing? You know, let's let's get into this. And I said, hey, let's deal with the elephant in the room first and foremost. Let's see if we can. I said, my goal here is to put this to bed as quickly as possible. I basically said what happened yesterday should not have happened, nor should it happen again. It's it's totally unnecessary for either one of us to talk to each other in a manner that We've talked to you. And I said, we, so I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't say you, I said, we, you know, cause I felt like there was some, there must've been something that I said or didn't say that got, that kind of helped to get him, get this person going. Right. And, uh, he bought the person apologized uh, profusely. And I said, what I want to do is help us get past this moment. And for us to really set the stage for how we will support each other, because at the end of the day, I, I told this person, I said, I need you. And if you're being honest, you need me. So let's figure this out because I'm not going away. And something tells me you're not going away either. So <laughs> said, so I, you know, I laid it out and he's, and the, and the person's like, you're a hundred percent right, Chris. Everything you're saying is is valid. And I said, well, I, pre- I you know, I acknowledge that. I appreciate that. Because like I said, we're authority figures, but we're not the authority. And I think sometimes men get stuck in that mode of, they, they mistake being an authority figure for being the authority. If that makes sense. It absolutely does. Yep. We're only the authority to us. I mean, at the end yep. of the day, and, 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 and and what other other people accept from us, whether they yeah. accept us in that role or whether they don't, and it's kind of like your kids. I mean, you know, you you know, you, I mean, you are the authority to your kids, but at the end of the level, you got to break it down sometimes to I'm an authority figure. Mm-hmm. I got to learn. I, I have to figure out how to make this a digestible meal, whatever it is, the challenge is or the objective is. I've got to make it so the people that 
that I'm affecting or attempting to affect are willing to digest what, uh, for lack of a better phrase, what I'm selling today. Yep. Yep. So Agreed. I think, yeah. so to, to cap this story off, uh, this has been a few days in the making. Uh, I've since been in, because, you know, it's FC a week, so there's a bunch of events. I was, at two, I was at two events with this person yesterday, and I could tell since we had our second day conversation on through, because we've since had a couple of meetings since then, and we've, we're playing nice again. Um, I sense growth within this person. And basically, the, the, what I want to what I want to close this with is, you lead it the way you want the outcome to be. I wanted, I had, I had um, set some outcome goals, and that's what I really focused in on, and I was able to achieve them, and it felt quite good at the end um, to be able to get there, and to know now that I believe I have somebody who is going to follow some of my emotional cues and just how we handle each other and deal with each other in our exchanges. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris, thanks for sharing that. It's an awesome story. And, you know, um, I, my hat goes off to you for, you know, taking the time to process through it and quote unquote, as they say, look for the, the greater good. I, I want to touch on something that, that really came out I think the strongest thing that I saw when you talk about having these different tools, and that's obviously part of what we wanted to share today. And one of the things that I definitely saw you use was your focus on outcome, right? You, you, you took the leadership position to say, okay, well, what, where do I want to take this? Because like, you could have just dropped a grenade on the whole freaking thing right up front and boom, and then, you know. I wanted you know. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I can believe that. Um, but taking the time to, to just take a step back before going forward, process it through and say, what's what's going to be the greater good of this? But a, the most important tool, and I, I think this is one thing that anybody can really start to grasp onto, men and women, uh, is the communication part of it. Uh, learning to say those words like we, us, this is how it made me feel, you know, and, and being able to express that clearly, concisely, and like you also said, most times the other person is reacting from a place that has nothing to do with you. Not always, but most times that is the case. So when that that's happening, that's what you have to do is kind of try to remove yourself from it because you feel attacked, but they're not necessarily even attacking you. There's other things that usually are triggering them from other people, other places, and you just have them to be in the line of fire, as you talked about, getting hit with that, that quote unquote friendly fire. So that's why I want to talk about a little bit about communication piece of it. When you started to use those words, you know, us, we, how did you see his reaction to that? Did it seem like it was diffusing him? And was, was that language productive in your exchange? And how, how did you f see that playing out? Honestly, it did. Um, I've, what I really cozied up to was, and it, and it, and this, this is what I would look for too. So yeah, so we, I talk about that a lot. I've been talking about that a lot more recently about giving what you want, mm -hmm. you know, the, the givers give type scenario that we've, you know, some of the teachings we've been through, you know, recently. Um, and I just keep falling back on that, giving what I want. You know what I mean? Because I, I saw myself in this person, you mm -hmm. know, I'm upset about some other things that have nothing to do with this person. And I'm going to, because I got their ear and I'm in, and I'm in this emotional state that I'm going to lean in and, you know, start on them. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, it's the outlet of my, my unhappiness. Um, and I think a lot of people do that. We we're unhappy about something, you know, somebody cut you off on the road. Um, um, your boss talked a little crazy to you. You know what I mean? Or you got, you know, you got reprimanded because you didn't deliver something on time or you didn't deliver it, deliver it in a manner that was what they wanted because it was a miscommunication. And I am literally been conditioning my mind with the aspect of what do I want? What do I want in the exchange? And it really requires a different level of focus and a different level, different level of discipline that you have to operate with. 
I am so in tune right now with a couple of things, my mission statement, my happiness, what my real dreams. And, you know, I, I got a short list of things that I want that I am now in tune with that are like, why, why not? Why shouldn't I have this? Why should, why, sh- why should I not want this? And really starting, you know, I think we talked about, I don't remember when uh, some podcasts back and I told you that I'd been kind of sleepwalking through life. I felt like I was sleepwalking through life for the last 10 years. And now that's, that's, that day is done. I am now focused on a short list of things that, are, that actually freaking matter to me now that I in, was in denial about, you know, and I think a lot of people, I, I think I'm not alone in that department where people in den- they're in denial about the things that they want. And I don't know if it's because of the fact maybe I didn't think I deserved it. I didn't think I could actually achieve it. It's a combination of thereof. But I'm now acutely aware of what I want and what my day-to-day goals and objectives are. And it's not easy. Let's be clear on that. It is not easy. To, if you are being true to oneself and the things that one wants, as long as it's not something you know, just grossly unrealistic, um, you should have settled, you should be settled in on what makes you happy and what you believe will make you happy. Um, so that's at the forefront of me every day. Now I wake up regardless of how good or bad I feel when I wake up, I try to immediately lock in on what my short-term goals are and what my long-term goals are. And that is up and including being a top flight communicator, if effecting change, within the universe that I operate in, positive change, obviously. Um, And that's really my, you know, my why, you know, I, you know, obviously we're in this, we're doing this mentoring education thing, which I'm hundred percent leaning. I'm so leaning into everything right now. The two things I got, because I basically got two things going on. I got the educational thing and I got the uh, um, working for the, uh, the AI folks, uh, my AI job. And I am focused on being the best version of myself, um, being the best asset that I can be. And really, I want, you know, it's not that I want to add a boy every day, but I want the people that matter to me the most to see that I'm moving and I'm and I'm and I'm full of effort every day. Sometimes we don't get things as done as much as we'd like in a given day. And that's when I have to lean in and give myself a little grace. But 100%. I am definitely a purpose-driven person today because I don't know when my time is going to be up. So <laughs> I'm going for it. Going for it. There you go. Chris, thanks for sharing that. Jerry, um, we were talking a little bit about just the effective communication that uh, he used, you know, to try to work his way through that. Uh, and then I saw, as Chris was telling his story, that you were pondering some different things. And I think I saw you make a couple of notes over there. What, what would you like to, to tag on to uh, what Chris shared in that story? One of the words that came up to my mind when Chris was sharing about how he's dealing with his uh, um, cohort uh, was the word meek. And, uh, you know, in scripture, it says that the meek shall inherit the earth. And um, when I discovered what meek actually meant, I was just like, oh, wow, that's actually a very powerful, powerful word. What Chris displayed was meekness. It was the ability, it's, it's, it, it, let me define meek. It's the, it's knowing that you have the power to, uh, to damage somebody essentially. <laughs> and, but you, you, um, you sheath your sword despite that. So, you know, you can chop somebody's head off, but the meek person actually is the one who's like, eh, and then puts this, puts it back into its sheath. And um, so essentially what we're talking about, whether it's, oh, you know, a clear communication, managing our emotions, this, any other, it's actually, we need to learn how to be meek. It's knowing, which requires us to know how powerful we actually are, right? And, and if you know how powerful you are, you know better than to let your emotions uh, drive the ship. Um, whereas it sounds like, what Chris is doing is letting his awareness guide the ship, right? So it's like, I know better than to take this action. I know that this emotion's rising up at me. Let me turn off the camera. Like he's making manual conscious choices 
knowing that he's having an he's in a, a state of emotion that if he lets run rampant, he could just explode all over the place. So he, you know, to me, in hearing him sharing all that, the back and forth, do I talk to the boss? Do I not talk to the boss? I did talk to the boss. All these things are all unfolding because even he said it towards the end there, he knew what he wanted. He knew exactly what hit, where his GPS was taking him. And as opposed to letting it spew out in any, any, any sort of direction that it was going to go there. And I define that as meekness where it's just, um, again, where it's the, the, it, it's, it's, it's learning to let your awareness be in control rather than your emotions or your emotional state. Um, another thing that I wrote down was that emotions for me, at least what I've noticed is emotions are actually telling me who I believe that I am. <laughs> so, um, uh, it, it, they're kind of like a, it's like a guidance system and we could give over to it and then become the emotion. Right. And that's when we like pop off and, you know, I'm, I'm going to do all these like terrible things and you just can't think straight. Your amygdala, your amygdala is taken over, you know, you're in fight or flight and so on and so forth. But really what I've come to find is that my emotions are actually trying to tell me something. They're trying, I, I said it before, but they're trying to tell me that I'm not in my ideal state. That's essentially what they're telling me. I'm not where I want to be. And, and, and as you know, like I, I, I work on metaphysics a lot with people. So I, I'm, I'm always working on towards helping people understand that these emotions and these triggers are actually gifts. If you can wrap your head around that, that they're actually gifts telling you who you believe you are. So, um, have y'all ever been, have y'all ever been in a fight with somebody <laughs> and, um, and you're in the middle of it, you're, 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 you're in the thick of it. You, you can see that you can't think straight. Like you, you, even in your mind, it's like, you know what you should be doing but the emotions are going off and the emotions are going off and all the stories and this keeps happening. And why does this keep happening to me? Or why does this person keep showing up this way? And then that person, the person that you're dealing with, they start breathing. They just start their shoulders slouch and they're not talking anymore. And they're not, they're, they're not putting logs in the fire and then you're still in the thick of it and you're like, I'm not getting, <laughs> and you're just like, I'm not getting out of this. And you just want to fold your arms. And why is this person, you can tell this person's actually being reasonable. That's what I, that's what I call the opposite of meekness where it's like, you're aware that you're in a place that you don't want to be. You're aware that the other person isn't where they need to be in order for you to continue being the way you're being. <laughs> but you decide to stay there because you just want a little bit more of that juice. You still want a little bit more of that poison. That's where I try to play at. Where, where can I start getting out of that mode when I'm in it? And I bring up the argument as an example because it's such an easy reference for most people, right? They'd be like, oh, yeah, I know what that's like. But m for the most part, m my anger and my emotions and all that stuff is really about me. It's like what I'm going through. This Whatever this person is doing right now probably has nothing to do with why I'm experiencing the emotions I'm experiencing. I'm probably experiencing the emotions I'm experiencing because I've never actually dealt with this emotion and this person happens to be the one that triggered that out of me. So what I need to learn how to do and what we people need to learn how to do is to start recognizing that the person only did their job. What was their job to show me that I have unconscious emotions that I haven't dealt with. Now, I'm not saying in that moment that you do need to deal with it. That's not my point. 
my point is to say, start playing the game of awareness, start playing the game of noticing. That way we get out of those habitual patterns. It's like, huh? Yeah, the, la the, la the last time that happened, I reacted this way. Why did I react that way? I reacted that way because I was feeling something. And the thing I was feeling wasn't even true. Oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe I just don't know. Like, maybe I don't know. I don't know why I'm having this emotion. I don't know why this person's saying this thing. I don't know why I'm saying this thing. I don't, what? I don't know. That helps me separate from what I think is happening, what I know to be happening, and, and playing from that place. So what I picked up for the most part is meekness. And then it was about that attitude, attitude awareness that he has. Like he, he knows, he said to himself, I'm a leader. This is an opportunity for me to show my leadership. That's attitude awareness, right? He knew what he wanted and he stepped into what he wanted into that state of already having that leadership position, as opposed to the lack of that leadership position, which would have just perpetuated the anger, perpetuated the discomfort, perpetuated the argument. And, um, so that that's that's what I wrote down. I mean, there was a lot that Chris shared with us, a lot of gold in that. There absolutely was a lot of gold in that. A couple of things I want to touch on that, you know, from both sides of what you guys shared. Uh, one piece of it is the accountability piece of it, because that's another thing, because, you know, Chris, you alluded to uh, that a little bit in you, what you spoke about. But when I say accountability, we are accountable to our emotions or more importantly, how we respond from our emotions. So that's part of the emotional intelligence piece of it is being accountable for what you do put back out based on what your emotions and what you're feeling. Uh, that, that's 100% you. The other person, as Jerry was just talking about, it's almost that like they give you this gift of making you aware of it. But now that you are aware, you are also accountable to it and need to then figure out how do I then put this back out? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What do I want to gain? As, as, as Jerry asked that question, what do you want? Uh, and, you know, Chris, just like you said, I'm a leader. I want to use that skill and that position to elevate this relationship, not burn it to the ground, right? So, but that's a choice you made and you actually took the ownership and accountability to push it in that direction. So that's a, the one thing I wanted to bring up when we talk about our emotions. And that, that it's, it's funny, I just did a post the other day and that's really what it was saying was, do you have control of your emotions or are your emotions controlling you, right? And uh, a lot of people I think are unfortunately in that space of letting their emotions control them versus taking control of them for themselves. And part of that is A, awareness, B, once you are aware, being accountable to that awareness. And, and, and starting to develop the tools and being able to express, communicate, which is another thing we we're talking about. How do I communicate what I'm feeling, why I'm feeling the way I feel? Because your feelings are legitimate. They, you own those and you have every right to be that way. And then the last thing I wanted to share is, Jerry, you hit it right on the head when you talk about meek or the meekness that's shown there and, and how that's, again, one of those words where you don't want, people will say, well, you don't want to be meek because it's seen as weakness but it's actually strength. Uh, I'm, I'm a big samurai geek. And if that is how they are trained, they know that they can whip that sword out and chop your head off before you can blink. But the power is in never drawing the sword. Is in never having to draw it. That, that, is, that is how they're trained. That is, you know, but if they have to, because of what's going on, they also are highly skilled at that part of it too. But the thing is, they want to stay, keep the sword, never pull it if they don't have to. So that is, I think, what we need to start to focus on, too, is understanding that, yes, I could pull out the grenade, toss it, and totally destroy this. Or we could take more of an opportunity in a position like what Chris did to say, let's figure out how we, and language is important, and we talked about that, can move this forward in a productive manner. And I think that's a key piece of it as well. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, so as we kind of wrap this up, is uh, I kind of made some notes here. And, you know, I said earlier about feeling your feelings. 
and that that's part of it. Um, to understand an, an express mission too, you know, in that it, in the instance of the exchange, only a few minutes went by, right? Because mm -hmm. you got all these different things, you know, zipping in and out of your mind, and what you what you can do and what not to do, and et cetera, et cetera. But the key too was that he let that marinate for the day, got to the next day, addressed it at a certain level, and then you know a little bit more the next day and a little bit more a few days later. And I think that's an, a key piece about your feelings in that same way. Yeah. You learn to temper yourself and your feelings and your emotions and understand that you don't have to respond right now, right? And I think we get caught up in that trap too. We feel like if I'm feeling this, I gotta say it right now. Give it, let it marinate for a minute, let it process. Give yourself some grace to say, okay, I'm feeling this way. Why am I feeling this way? Is it a trigger? Is it rooted in something else? And you're probably not going to always get those answers in two or three minutes. It might take two or three days. It could take two or three months. You never know. But the, my point of that is it's okay to, I guess, sit with those feelings for a period of time before you feel like you have to take action. But again, that's that awareness piece. And so I wanted to come back to that um, because I think that's a, just a critical piece that you want to look at. That's a huge one um, for me <clears throat> um, to be still, like l truly learning how to be still, be the center of the storm. Um, honestly, Brian, I, I've actually started going away from that whole asking why am I feeling these feelings? I am feeling these feelings. For me to even ask why, gets me going down a rabbit hole and I never actually get to let go of the fact that I'm feeling these things. Because like I said, your emotions are like clouds in the sky. And if you go and try to figure out why this cloud is here, all you're doing is holding on to the cloud as opposed to just, I am feeling this. I have a story of why I'm feeling this, but this, I can tell you right now as, a, as someone who helps people through this, the story you're telling yourself as to why you're feeling the way you're feeling has nothing to do with the way you're feeling. You're feeling the way you're feeling and your mind is looking for a reason you feel this way. And I'm telling you the reason you probably don't even actually remember. It could literally be a 20 year old reason. So like you don't need to dive deep. You need to release. You need to release the emotion. Because what Love happens that. is if we start thinking about why and so on and so forth, we're not actually dealing with the emotion, we're dealing with the thought about the emotion. And so what ends up happening is we then end up feeling good because feelings come and go, but we never dealt with the feeling or I should say the emotion and the emotion stays with us. And then because it's just staying there unconscious, another conscious thing happens, which triggers the emotion again. And you're like, why is this happening? Oh, it's because of this. And it's because of this and because of this. And you're like, oh, it can't be because of that. And then the emotion stays and the thought goes and then you think everything's fine. And then 50 years later, you have cancer. And it's because you had this pent up emotion that you thought you were dealing with. But in fact, all you were doing was pushing it down and dealing with the thoughts about the emotion. So how do you, so again, so how do you actually deal with those emotions, those feelings? Allow them to be there. Don't give them, don't give them extra thoughts. Don't give them extra reasons. The reasons are valid. I'm not saying they're not valid. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying your thoughts aren't valid. What I'm saying is in order to re truly release an emotion, you need to actually accept and let it go. How do you let it go? By allowing it to be there. It's as counterintuitive as that might sound. Literally sit still and be like, look at that thing. It doesn't feel good. It's uncomfortable and so on and so forth. And like, and then it, it, it literally, it's like, it's like this. If you have a beach ball and you're in the ocean and you push that beach ball down into the ocean, buoyancy would require that that thing comes back up to the surface, right? So that's how I, I look at our, our emotions or our feelings is that 
it's like a it's like a beach ball in the ocean that we've we've held down and then something triggers us to like let it go and so it pops up to our conscious mind and then instead of us dealing with the emotion that popped up I, I i'm repeating myself i recognize instead of us dealing with the emotion that popped up we deal with the thought about the emotion so we're so as we're dealing with the thought we're pushing that we're pushing that ball back down under the water and thinking that we're taking care of it so you know what what i what i have folks do whenever they are in an emotional state one of the mantras that i have is that we're imagining meaning automatically right so if we can learn to imagine meaning manually we can then let that emotion come to surface and then have empowering thoughts about this emotion oh like i said in all anxiety is separation anxiety oh this emotion's here to remind me of my true divinity or to remind me that i am a leader or to remind me that i am this right and then just sit with that and and then you see the emotion will be like well I'm going to personify this emotion and be like, well, thank you for, thank you for hearing me. Thank you for understanding me. Thank you for allowing me to be here. And then it won't have an emotional tie. It won't have a tie to you. And it was like, well, what am I supposed to do now? And guess what? It's going to be like, well, this is boring. I'm going to let myself go. And then it's gone. <laughs> right. But on the, on the counter side, what we do is most people do is I'm having emotion and it's because of this. And if I wouldn't have done that, and if I would have shown up this way, I should have done this and I should have done that. I feel, and they'll still keep And then that emotion just keeps getting, um, solid. It, it, it gets more and more solid and real and, 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 um, thick. And it, it seems harder and harder to release. And it's because you're not actually releasing. You're just thinking. So, um, for fear of repeating myself, your the, the awareness that you should be holding is the awareness that it exists, not why it exists, just that it does exist. I'm feeling angry right now. All right, cool. I'm just going to sit in my anger and yeah. just allow myself to be angry. Just yeah. actually allow yourself to be angry. And any yeah. thought of anything external to yourself is a falsity. So all you have to do is just be with the emotion and the emotion will do, take its time, however long it needs. You give it love, you give it a, a attention, give it understanding, and it will go on its own. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and I think that's a great technique to use to, to, to clarify it and allow it to, to free itself. Uh, so let's do final thoughts because, uh, Chris, I know, we, you know, we've talked about a lot of different things today. What would you like to just share with our audience as a takeaway to help them manage their emotions and, uh, come away with more power and more focus based on that? Okay. I want to, <clears throat> I want to make a couple of points and obviously this is from my perspective, my, my vantage point, my viewpoint, my eyes, um, Self emotional intelligence, EQ. Uh, I want to just share a couple of the main components of it to begin with. And it's steeped in four, in my mind, and, and you can read this. So it's not just my mind. Uh, it's steeped in self awareness, self regulation, social awareness, and relationship management. Those are the four key pillars there. Um, I keep going back to the title, how to master your emotions. Now, if I'm using me as my own model, which is the only model I have to begin with, it's, you know, charity begins at home. Okay. Let's begin. Charity begins at home. So for me, it's, I went from the person that case of Rossera, whatever happens, happens to, I'm, I started to make the investment in, learning how to manage my emotions. And now I'm moving into this, to the phase where I'm learning how to master my emotions. So it's a process. You just don't wake up in the seat. And I think that's called giving yourself a chance. 
a it's a it's a recognition piece you a you start first you got to identify and be able to recognize it and be able to be honest about it uh good shortcomings good points i do this well i do this poorly put it all out on the table and and try to make some sense of it all at that point i and it, and you don't do that on your own you if you know if you you know it's like i always say i don't work on my own teeth there's a professional to help you out. There's someone that can help you out, whether it's a friend, whether it's a, you know, a professional relationship, you have a therapist, whatever, however you choose to try to attack what you know is not right. So that's the other thing. Um, My final thoughts are, I'm going to ask a basically a rhetorical question. Why is EQ so, so crucial for your, not only your professional success, but your personal success. Why is it so important? Um, And again, we go back to people that operate on a high, from a high, high EQ perspective. One of my goals was to have, to improve my, all my relationships, not just the couple that I failed miserably at, but all of them. Okay. Because I figure if I, it's for me, it's an opportunity to practice, 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 practice. The more practice, the better I get at it. It helps me as a leader to enhance my decision making. I make better decisions. I'm making better decisions. These are those affirmations. It has literally, and you know, I have a tattoo that says about resilience. It helps to increase my resilience because I, I, you know, we all have moments. I have moments still. They're just less moments and they don't stay as long as they used to stay. You know, they would set up, set up a tent and just camp for a while. And now it's like, no, 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 you can't set up the tent here. You don't have a permit. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep it moving. So, um, and it also, makes me a better and more effective leader, which is something that is very important to me as a whole. You know that now that I I am on hundred percent on board with the fact that I am a leader. Now it's a, now it's a goal to become a better and more effective leader. And that requires practice, practice, practice. And lastly, when we talk about this all the time, my overall well-being, which translates into my mental health as well as my physical health. We can get all these other components to operate at the level that they can and then some. Then my overall well-being translates healthier, happier, and more satisfied with the life that I'm living. And I think a lot of people do not really zero they have or at least they haven't gotten to that point where they're zeroing in on those things because it's almost that uh, it's like that mythical thing that's out there and a lot of people don't put a lot of time into it and they should i'm there and i'm not and i'm not leaving this space i'm here to you know as i say in one of my new catchphrase is see it be it live it I am attempt. No, let me take the attempt part. I am doing it, and I would implore anybody that is not satisfied. I'm not, not talking about how much money you're making, any of that kind of stuff, because that's all. It's all fixable in my mind fairly easily, but it's the it's the gray matter. Mm-hmm. You know, are you, can you look yourself in the eye and say, "I'm doing everything in my relationship." my personal relationship as well as my professional relationship to raise it to new heights and new levels? Or am I just kind of going along to get along? Am I not calling out the things that are, that I find inadequate or I find they can be improved and that requires work. So the onus is on you or, or on we to do so. So, I know it was a little long and drawn out, but I, I was trying to do my best to 
really kind of be descriptive about the feelings that I have. Good points. And Jerry, anything you want to share from a final thought standpoint? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> from a final thought standpoint, it, for me, I, I think that um, uh, it, it's simple. It ain't easy. You know, it's, 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 it's so easy to be a hearer of the, all the things that we're talking about, but to be a doer is a completely different story, right? And so that's why I like to bring up those incidences that are more common than not, you know, a, an argument, a fight, end of the day, you didn't get the sales that you wanted, or there's all sorts of things that gets us into an emotional state. Those are the opportunities for us to practice the presence, practice being conscious of being the person that we want to be and, and recognizing that, again, the emotions that rise up are only there to show us that we're not being the person that we want to be. Because if we were being the person that we wanted to be, we wouldn't be having this emotional reaction. So if you can learn in fact, I'll, I'll have an invitation to whoever listening to spend a week having an uncritical observation of your inner talking, of your inner reactions, uncritical observation. This is, it's, not the, it's not the easiest thing to do, but if you can nail it and if anybody wants help, they can hit me up. I, I have a whole week about how to do, how, a, a whole week about how to go about doing this, but what I mean by an uncritical observation means I am experiencing what I'm experiencing and I'm allowing it to be what I'm experiencing. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Um, this has been amazing. I really appreciate both you gentlemen for joining for this uh, emotional intelligence and your emotional quotient and just your overall awareness of what's going on with you emotionally and being able to attract, manage, and as Chris said, hopefully start to master those things is what this has been all about. So hopefully you got some value out of it. And I think we shared some great ideas, some great tips and some, some of our stories as to what we've been through and, and what we'll continue to go through because as Absolutely. Chris mentioned, it, it ain't, it ain't over. It, it, there are always going to be challenges. The, the thing is, how do you manage and navigate your way through them? So that said, we're going to wrap up for today. And uh, until next time, as I always say to everyone, take care. And even more importantly, uh, take care of each other. Uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye now.